welcome to my weekly Wednesday broadcast. I am Anne LaFollette and I'm coming to you from Paris. And I'm incredibly excited to introduce you to Shirley Casey, who's a UK fashion designer, who's across the pond from me in the UK. Hi, Shirley. Hi, Anne. How are oh, you? My, it's lovely to see you this evening and I cannot wait to jump in to our conversation. So I wanted to let you know that there are many friends in the house who are watching. Of course, Pauline Riley is here. And we also have um, Cindy Merrill, who we don't see that often. And so Cindy, thank you so much for joining us live tonight. Jane Foster is here. And Jane, you have got to come on soon because Jane, who has been sewing since she was six, just made the most beautiful blouse out of one of my fabrics. I can't wait to get it as soon as I'm home. My goodness, it's so exciting. And Janelle is here and Judy is here and many, many, many of you are joining us right now because hopefully the countdown timer is helping you find me. <laughs> so tonight's conversation is all about Shirley and Shirley joined my programs last year, right? Shirley, is that how, did you find yeah, her first last October. year? October. In October? Yeah. And so I always like to get started by talking a little bit about just your creative background and how you got started in your on your creative journey. Um, I think I've been creating for a long, long time. Um, and I have to get this in there that my journey really started through mental ill health. Yeah, yeah. Um, I used it as a tool to deal with different sort of situations. But I've always really loved art. And I was thinking about this question from our last interview. Um, I loved art at school. So instead of doing typing, I did extra art lessons. So yeah, I've always, I've always, always enjoyed creating. And you're right now surrounded by a lot of your artwork, right? That's in, that's right behind you. And so, yeah. You have like, but you've done a lot of different things. So talk to us a little bit about sort of the breadth of art that you've experimented with and, and actually developed quite, quite successfully over the years. Wow, where do I start? Yeah, yeah, because there, um, there's a lot to share. There is a lot. So I was exhibiting quite a few years ago. Um, I joined local art groups. I became an exhibition organizer of two of them um and organized successful exhibitions in london for the group uh i was doing solo shows as well in and around the uk i had an art gallery for just over a year about a year and a half um used that platform for my work but also for other artists to exhibit um and then obviously i hit some hurdles, had some not so great things happen. Um, and then when I closed the gallery, I lived in a refuge for a while. And even there, I painted big murals on the wall, and brightened the place up for everyone living there. And then I went on to construction trades and learned to become a bricklayer a painting and decorator and I studied horticulture. So there's, there's lots of things I've done and I've, I've sold my work um, for offices. I've created limited edition miniature sculptures, quite quirky little, little idiosyncratic things they are, but sold thousands of those. Um, and then I of produced limited edition prints which have been purchased by a company and the proceeds of sales of some of those went to the charity crisis mm -hmm. in the uk um, and then they had some in their offices I, I just don't know where to kind of go with it there's so much stuff that i've covered yeah. so mainly my work started as what I call doodle sketches. So I was doing a lot of doodling, a lot of sketching, very spontaneous work, if I go back. Um, and then I kind of 
started doing expressive florals more when I had my gallery and I sold most of my floral work and I've kind of done a bit of a circle really because I did the quirky sketches and then um, I was doing those for quite some, still do some now to help with my mindset and stuff like that. Um, but my florals I do to express moments of happiness. You know, when I'm feeling really uplifted and it was from the florals and all the other work that I'd done that out of Cassie Designs business, Cassie Kit was born, which is the clothing brand. Right, right. And then that, uh, the clothing brand is still really a work in progress, I would say. I think it'll always be a work in progress. You know, when you're designing clothing and other products, it's like you're evolving all the time. Um, and then I've got another website that's under construction, which will house only surface pattern designs and interior design ideas. I'm so excited <laughs> about it. I'm so excited about it. And one of the things that, um, that I don't know that much about and so would love for you to share with all of us is when you move into that sort of floral zone, like some of the beautiful things behind you, talk a little bit about just how does that emerge? What are the materials you're using? So, okay. So I use acrylic and acrylic inks, and I don't actually use any reference, Anne. So some people might not like me saying this because I know the right way is to use references, but the reality is I don't actually use references. So I kind of just go for it. And when I paint flowers, they're, they're not like, you wouldn't go in the garden and go, oh, I recognize that flower. They're, they're sort of very dreamlike. They're, they just come from somewhere else. I'm more interested in the, the emotion that they evoke and they are quite sort of uh, emotional kind of pieces of work and I'm very interested in colour and symbolism. So whether subconsciously, you know, those colours and the symbolic meanings, it's after I paint them and I reflect on them, I think, oh, that's how I was feeling, that's symbolic of da da da. Right, right. So, yeah, my, my most of my artwork comes from some would say my subconscious, unconscious. I would also say I'm quite an what you call an automatic artist. What tell so, us what that is? Quite, meaning sorry, that it well, tell us what that is, meaning it really comes to actually, you. Sorry. Go ahead. Tell us what that is. For me, from from what my understanding, some people use that word really loosely, very kind of freely when they describe kind of intricate doodling type works but for me it's it's more about painting from your unconscious so it's not even the subconscious it's more about and this is what I want to set a membership up for it's, it's about having clearing your mind of any thought whatsoever you know you're not actually thinking about anything and just this kind of I don't know, it's like a light bulb switch is on or the doorbell rings and it's like just go and get onto a bit of paper and don't even think about what the outcome is going to be and just allow the connection between the paper and my hands. I don't sort of think I'm definitely going to do florals today or I'm going to do a doodle today. It's, it's um, just a it's a unconscious response, but probably from the subconscious as well. Right. Probably. But, um, yeah, it's, it's very automatic. It just, it, there's no, it just comes out. And you create, it appears you create a lot of large format work. So talk just a little bit about the decision to do that. How does... 
so i think with the when you say like large canvases thing so i think with the large canvas it just for the florals especially right i just i just feel they they the bright colors and the vibrancy really lends itself to like big big pictures and and even if i create a small picture i will usually take it into the computer i will make it much bigger mm. and then have it printed as three or four times the size of the original wow i just i, I like working on a on a large canvas I just fine i feel very free you know that freedom you've got so much space right i thought that that might be the case that it really frees you and allows you it, that freedom yeah. of expression yeah with the doodle with the doodle sketches i do do them i was doing them almost daily sometimes three a day um up to a few months ago before i joined the um, academy um but with those it's like although it's quite automatic what's coming out i know that i'm feeling a bit off and i need to get that out on paper so if i'm feeling a bit anxious or i've not slept well and i'm feeling tired and i can't switch off that's when the doodles i go to the doodles the the sketches and let it out i love it i love it so now tell us about your working space like where do you work Everywhere. Every, everywhere. <laughs> Mainly because the weather's not been great, I've been doing a lot of stuff in my lounge. But I do have a a garden, a big garden shed, which was to be as a studio, and it's just so full of stuff at the moment, Anne, and it really needs it really needs like re rigging so that I can have it as a nice kind of gallery space. I've got loads of space in it um size wise but there's too much artwork in there too many materials artworks so a lot of it i'm doing from my lounge or my kitchen wherever yeah my hallway Any, anywhere any, anywhere yeah. that you can find a space yeah which is listen there are a couple of things you said that i think are really important to lean into a little bit and the first is that art does not have to be you don't have to start a piece of art from a reference so there's there's obviously a lot of um, a lot of art that is started from a reference, but it's very freeing to actually, and it's actually I think much much harder to let your subconscious be the place where your creativity comes from because a you don't know what's going to appear on the page and but it also allows this freedom of of imaginary flowers and yeah. we know they're flowers but they're as you said not a flower we're going to find in the garden. Um, yeah, some a bit whimsical. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so they're your imaginary flowers, but they're flowers yeah. that evoke an emotion, or they're flowers that evoke a, a time of a time of day or an experience that you're having. Um, I think the second thing you said that's really worth repeating is that you can work anywhere. You don't have to have a fancy studio to work. No, you can do it on your kitchen table. You can. Yeah, and you absolutely can, and you know. It's a privilege to have just a studio space, but I wouldn't want anyone to not create because they think they don't have what they need. Because I, I know I spent two years Anne, on my sofa without moving when I had a breakdown. Right. And I had pads. My daughter used to buy me like little A4 pads had loads of permanent markers, lots of graphic pens, and it was the only thing I did. And even though I say only, when I reflect back now, I'm quite proud of what I did with very little. And I think it's so important that people that are on a budget or, or you know, they think, I really want to do this, but I can't afford it. There's so many different things they need to look at, how they can actually, you know, create on a budget. Right, yeah. I, I actually get, um, a couple of weeks ago, I, got, I had some lining wallpaper, rolls of it. 
And I thought, I can't waste it. It was a very heavy duty uh, lining paper. So I soaked it. I mixed coffee in with water, made so that it was nice and dark. And then I dipped the paper in the coffee and it just come out amazing. Like it looked like a really old piece of paper. Like parchment. Yeah, like parchment, all ready to be able to put something on it. And that roll of wallpaper probably would cost somebody, I don't know, maybe four pounds in English money. Right, right. So yeah, there's ways of creating. You can be very creative. Yeah, you can be very yeah. creative on a budget. So you are very prolific. And you also have a website up and running that has a lot of work on it. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go to your, I know you have another website under development, but let's share with people the one that's available now because there's beautiful work for them to go find, find there. So let me make sure I'm ready in the background. We're going to go to... Um, Cassie Designs. Cassie and so let me now click this other button to share my screen and it says welcome to uh so artist Shirley Casey K it's CaseyDesigns.com and the wonderful Pauline Riley can put the link in the in the comments for us but talk a little bit about how you created this website what was your initial vision for it and then we'll dive into some of the the tabs. Right, so this was created back in 2004, I think. Yeah. And it didn't look anything like this. It, was, it wasn't it was an e-commerce site. So I've owned the domain name for quite a few years. And um, the guy who built my first website, I asked him if he could get me something for a new one, which this one is. Um, so he basically put the structure there and then I had to do everything else, upload the pictures, size them. So he basically done the shell for me. Wonderful. And then that was another huge learning curve, you know, sizing pictures, deciding what tabs to have. Yeah, and no, it's a big, so you, and, and you have so much to showcase, right? So you have prints, you have videos, you have surface designs, you have your original artwork, and you also have creative gifts. And that's just this menu down here where you can see my cursor is moving across it here. But you also have a lot of information up at the very, very top. But before we dive into some of the tabs, I'm going to bring you back on screen because I kind of forgot to ask you, how did you how much did you know about surface design before you came into my hashtag ans universe so i think it was back in 1996 when i hang on 96 yeah 96 when i opened my gallery yeah i met a guy who was a businessman he used some of my art for a show he was doing and we become good friends. And he said, I think you should approach Royal Dalton. Um, he said, to see if we can get your stuff on China. So that was the, the very first right. thing. But I didn't know about surface pattern design. I knew about surface design. Surface design, right, which is the umbrella. Which is, is the whole umbrella of, of design, isn't it? Yeah. And... I also experimented in 2010, I think it was, with my first print on, on a canvas bag through Tesco store. Wonderful. Tesco, Tesco store is, is kind of like, yeah, that's kind of like a Kmart or a Walmart a in the United States. Supermarket. supermarket. And then what I did, Anne, was I got them to print the bags and then I got into buying fabric paints and then embellishing over the print. And then um, I've kind of sort of known a bit because I experimented for a jacket for my son. I painted a skirt for myself. So I knew what I was doing then was like a surface that I was painting. But I never knew what I know now since I've joined your academy. 
Right, right. And you, so it's so interesting that you also had fabric and then would do your own artwork over the fabric to <laughs> embellish it. Because when we had yeah. Kathleen Rogers on, I think it was last week, she also did that with her tea cozies originally. So I love that there's some commonality there. And it's so fun inside of my programs to, for people to find these, these similarities or these interests that they have in common. Um, so you obviously were, had already a pretty sophisticated business and had been doing many different things when you found the surface pattern design. So what appealed to you about it? I think what it was, Anne, I come across you about three years ago and I was nursing my mum, she moved in with me and I was looking after mum and I think I dipped my toe into your doodles. Yeah. But because of my social anxiety, which I do suffer quite badly, believe it or not, with, I haven't really been out of my house much, I'd say, in the last two and a half years. Um, I think what happened is you have this kind of way of talking with people. Your, your approach and sort of the way you explain what your offerings are makes it very sort of enticing because you... you I think I felt you was very down to earth. And then I saw the doodles come up again and I, I checked out your doodles. And then when the Acad I knew I was going to do the Academy, when mum passed, my mum passed in 2020, um, obviously it had a major impact on me. Yeah. But I just kept saying to myself, I need to um, be brave. And I really need to confront my fears and I need to get out of the comfort zone and I need to join a community. And it's the best thing I've done, Anne. Honestly, it is the best thing I've done. I've learned so much from your, your academy, but I know there's so much more right. to learn. There is, you know, so much, there is so much more to learn, for sure. So much to learn. And I'm a believer in lifelong learning. I don't think we ever stop learning. Yeah. So, yeah, I would, I think your, your academy, as I say, I don't think it is the best thing that I've done in years. Because I, I've, I look at surface pattern now and knowing that I will be able to um, present repeating patterns, industry standard, yes. instead of what I've done before, which is on the on the pod sites, what I've done is I've uploaded an image, and when that image doesn't fit product, I've mirrored it. Oh, interesting. And I don't like the look of mirroring. Right, right. It It's not the same as when you look at a pattern done properly yeah so it, yeah right it repeats seamlessly from left to right and top to bottom it's definitely a different effect yeah it's totally totally, totally different. different i mean i've used photoshop for quite a lot i've learned everything i know about photoshop for years but um no the academy it was you man I can't oh, say you're any so sweet. <laughs> you're so sweet to say so. So we're going to be doing it again. So Doodle starts on May 9th and everyone's welcome to take it again. It's actually a brand new updated version. And then I'd love I'll, that. And then I'll be opening enrollment to the Academy class of May 2022. It's always super fun because I only have a class of May each year and a class of October. Um, so we'll dive a lot more into that. People will be getting information from me over the coming weeks. But let's pop back over to your website so that we can dive into some of the categories that you showcase there. Because um, I'd love people to start to follow you and also realize the breadth of artwork that you create. So I'm going to make sure that I'm on the right tab in the background. And then I'm going to click the little button on my screen that says share my screen. And so this pattern that's on screen right now, is this a, a pour? Was that like a, what was that? That incredibly beautiful abstract. That's a digital. That's what I created digitally. Wow. Did you create that in Photoshop? Um, I think I'd created that in both Photoshop and Procreate. And Procreate, because it's just spectacular. I used it as the... Because I, 
I'm sorry, I'm not, no, I go ahead. Image. A lot of my stuff has been the digital stuff has been created in um, Photoshop. And then now I'm sort of using Procreate. I kind of use different programs now across. So I might have some in um, Photoshop and then I might do additional bits to it in Procreate. I love it. I love the fact you're mixing all these medias. So where would you like me to take see, people? See next? this picture here? Yeah. Well, if you go on my news section, there's a news section at the top where it says news. Yep. So when you, the, the, the gallery that's showing this, you can click on that link and it takes you through to the gallery and it shows you close-ups of the picture. Wonderful. So, so I, this one, a touch of joy, growth, and kindness? Yeah. So that's it. And then at the bottom there, there's a, a link and it takes you to that company's website. It's I thinking. Think. It's Should thinking. Do. It's thinking. There we go. Limited edition. Three and then if you scroll print. that up, it, you can look at the close-up on the middle one, the middle round circle at the bottom. Oh, uh, wow. Look at this. This is great. So you have this close-up feature. If you go on the circle, though. Yep, we'll go on the circle. Hold no, on, down, like uh, sorry. Scroll up, Anne. I'll scroll up. Uh, down. Sorry, you need to scroll down. Right. See the middle circle? Yep. You click on that then you can really see the texture. Wow, Shirley, this is amazing. And so is this, tell us about your process for creating this. Well, believe it or not, this picture began uh, as a free to be me piece of work that I was involved in with a friend of mine. And the original color was like blue, pale blue. Mm -hmm. And it was made like, like a collage, constructing, deconstructing. And then what happened, I then took into Procreate and I created about four or five different variations of that in different colors. Yeah. And then that one was printed. It was done with a special method where they actually texture the print. It's amazing, fantastic. Wow. So this company, I'm they've produced another one of my works, which is on my home banner, the green one. Yep. And that's also in their shop, I think. And that one's gonna be for garden art. Lovely. Because I'm trying to create like a, a lot of work for garden art. Oh, I love it. I love it. So I'm going to come back to your website so that I can click on surface designs, right? And so I'm going to go to your expressive abstract florals and so that people can see some of the amazing work that you're doing with these, with the repeating patterns that you now create. These are just amazing. I love them. And, uh, and so you also have a, I've, I've opened up your Instagram account because I wanted people to make sure that they know how to, sh how to follow you here under Casey designs, right? And so I'm going to scroll down a little bit so that they can see some of the gallery works that you've showcased here. Some of the, um, additional work that you have, uh, highlighted on your website and, uh, and I love the oversized, right? Some of these are just fabulous. Like this, in, this is so beautiful. And um, what kind of is your goal moving forward? Tell us just a little bit about what, um, you know, what are you thinking of? What, how are you sort of, you obviously have so much to offer and, and that can be a little overwhelming because it's like, do I go here? Do I go I there? Do I go home. here? So yeah. tell us, yeah, tell us what you're thinking of next. Right. So I've got two sort of things that I'm going to be focusing on. The most important one is um, a collection of wallpaper designs. That is something I'm working on. This is just a very small sample of one that came back. Oh, it's beautiful. Hang on. 
We got it. Yeah, perfect. Oh my goodness. I love the colors. That's a beautiful light blue and kind of a very almost kind of bluish brown. And then the off white. Gorgeous. And where do you and print? Then, where do you get things printed? Because you always love, you love, you know, you're one of my students who loves to get things printed so you can see exactly what it looks like. Tell us about that process. So <clears throat> I've used a pay on demand site that I've used for years for yeah. my sampling because to get a very good professional portfolio of wallpaper designs together, it's not going to be cheap. And yeah, so what I've done is I ordered 45 samples like that one. And when you do the samples, you've got a choice of on the pod sites, you've got a choice of three types of paper. So you can have the um, stick, stick to the wall, you know, the self adhesive. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Um, then you can have the paste the wallpaper, and then there's another one. I chose to sample the cheaper ones um, because I was more concerned about the print quality. But what I did realise, they had put one in that I hadn't ordered, which was the more expensive, about 380 gram in weight. And with that one, it's a vinyl. Yeah. So if you want your patterns to come out shiny, sort of deep colours, the vinyls would do it. So they're just samples. I, as I say, I've, I've had 45 done, but I'm in the process at the moment. I've sent my printer a, a few samples that I want printed um, because I want some stuff with silver. I want some stuff with 3D, like yeah. 3D. Um, so that's my, that's my goal that I'm working really hard on at the moment get that sample together. I've been um, writing down lists of companies that I want to approach once I'm ready. And the other one is getting Shirley Cassie Art and Design's website finished because I'm going to actually have a membership area on there. Oh, great, 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 great. And I, I really do want to offer um, in the future either one-to-one -one coaching zoom coaching or maybe sessions of maximum of four as subscriptions yeah um and then off the back of that i will sort of set up a subscription like a membership some type of membership that sounds fantastic that sounds fantastic so tell us a little bit about what you're wearing because i think you're wearing some several of your designs this is this is um, this is actually a sarong you know like beach sarong but i ordered it in a really let me show you yeah it's so beautiful it in a very very large size because i like them long yep see if i can show you so wow that's really big but look the bottom the bottom is different yeah the bottom is very different yeah the bottom is very very different now this one, I won't show you too much. I've got that in this colour. Oh, in the beautiful! Blues. And this is different. This is more like a little silk scarf that I had done some while back. This is a lot smaller. I'll show you this one. So beautiful! Yeah, it's so so beautiful. That one. Yes, quite Love abstracty it. floral too. Yep, but very, very oversized, one? right? Very. This like... one's small. Let me show you this out. That one's smaller. Oh yes, yes, this I can is tell. a proper scarf, chiffon scarf. Ah, oh, lovely. Yep, I can see it. And uh, but the fl the floors on the chiffon scarf are still very big and abstract and oversized and gorgeous, gorgeous. Like me, <laughs> gorgeous. I'm <laughs> yeah, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so is there anything else that you want to show us? We've been on for about 35 minutes and that's usually... A... Just can show you these. These are little crystal glasses that I had done. Oh, beautiful. Talk about them. Talk about the how, how you did them and your... So your... the pattern, yeah. I 
created in Photoshop. But every pattern that I do comes from an original piece of work. So the original might not look anything, anything like, like that. that. Yeah. But I use in every every pattern I create comes from an original. This is like a whiskey glass and it's a bit two tone. Yeah. Or three tones. It's incredible. Yeah, with gradations. It's almost like a gradient. Yeah, you can't and this is nicer in real life. It's got I'm little sure. Colors. Yeah, hard to see this it through the one. camera. Look at that. Oh beautiful. Hang on. The other way. There we go. There we go. Oh wow. Wow. That's amazing. And you've got Captain so that, Kid on there. That's lovely. You've got your logo. Yeah. You're and it's on one side. Black, black at the side. And this is more of like one of my planet type. Hang on. Oh, I love them. And that's got a Cassie. Yeah. And so it's got. when did yeah. you create those? I've had those for about a year and a half now and just to show you some photo before we wrap yeah, up yeah please do so, because this is new from the last time you were live with me a lot of this is brand new it's spectacular the these are professional photos that we had done a, a while back wow oh my goodness so that scarf is a sarong but it's just the way that it's been worn there's that one I don't know if you saw this one. Huh? Oh, that's a wonderful, wonderful one. I don't think that I saw that one. I saw the gold and black one, but that green. So that and one's black got is... um, here is a single motif on the back. Right. But that's got that's got about three or four placement patterns on it. Yep. And then there's this one. Oh yes, love it. Very graphic. Right, Same graphic. one, but just seeing my daughter's face a bit. Yeah, she's so pretty. <laughs> she's and then your model. This... She's your sweet model. My pussy cat. Oh, I love the pussy cat. Wow. And then there's this one with the beanie hat and a hoodie dress. Oh, I love the hat. Fantastic. Um, Oh, that's no that's, trousers. That's the trousers that go with the jacket she was wearing yeah. in the earlier photo. Outstanding. So we've got, as you say, Anne, there's, there's lots of stuff. It's just about honing in now. Um, my vision, because I know we may have different people have different views on this. You know, I might think, God, why has she got all these websites and not focusing? And to give some sort of clarity to my reason, Cassie Designs is where everything began. And Cassie Designs, I've only got surface patterns on there today for this purpose for today. Right. But I don't normally, wouldn't normally have that on there. It's just to share with everyone. So, it's essentially, Cassie Designs is going to purely be art, paintings and prints, limited editions. Cassie Kit is going to be purely clothing. Fashion, clothing, yep. Yep. And um, Shirley Cassie Art Design is going to be interiors and surface design. The reason is that my way of thinking, I know some people might think I'm crazy, but my way of thinking is this. If I wanted to go to, say I wanted to buy something from Michael Kors, I go to Michael Kors' shop, or Versace, or wherever, I go to their shop. You're, not, you're only going to see their clothes. You're not going to see the people behind me designed it, da 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 da, da. People, If you went to Versace and then all of a sudden you're seeing for Sachi surface pattern or for Sachi artwork or for Sachi. My feeling is I'm going to lose clients for particular products. So like in the UK, and, I, and someone can pull me up on this, and I'm quite happy for someone to, to tell me I'm wrong, you know, I'm, I'm always learning. But I think in the art kind of business, art dealers or whatever, 
if they went to a website and they see that I'm doing art and I'm doing fashion and I'm doing stuff, they'd say this artist doesn't know who she is. You know, she she's doing a bit of this and a bit of that, and she really doesn't know where she's coming from. Yeah. So, although it's very hard to manage, and I absolutely agree that some things get neglected slightly at the moment. The long-term plan is that I will be able to do what I do best, which is to create. And when I can earn loads and loads of money, I will pay somebody like a VA yeah. to deal with all my content, all the things that take me time across my three websites. Yeah, across your across your universe. The yeah. Shirley Casey universe. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. You can tell me if you think I'm crazy, Anne. I don't mind. I think that it's a lot of work, which you know it's a lot of work. But I think you know your audience a lot better than I know your audience in terms of how each audience reacts to what they see and how it's presented to them. And you have to go with your gut. You have to go with your gut because you are going to know that better than anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. So thank you so much for joining me today. Is there anything else you want to show us before we wrap up? Uh, did I show you? This is something really cute. This is a little caravan. Oh, my goodness. That's adorable. Look. Yeah, yes, it's so sweet. I can't seem to get this. There we go. It's a little caravan. Yeah. Tell us about and it. So there's a, a cheap shop. I can't think what's it called. Um, it's called The Works. And it's where you can go and buy cheap paints, cheap paper. They do craft stuff. And... I go in there a lot. Sometimes I'll buy gesso because it's so, so cheap. And gesso is quite expensive. And they have all little boxes that you can paint, little trinket boxes. And they had those, six pounds. Six pounds. And I thought, right, I'm going to do one of those for my daughter. It was Christmas gone, one for her dad. And I just thought that they were so cute, Anne. Yeah. They're actually little birds houses oh they're little bird houses <sighs> they're so sweet they're so sweet well when you watch the replay of today's broadcast you're going to see all of the explosion of hearts that people have pushed the little heart button as you've shown oh, all of your gorgeous thank products you. Thank and you. so i just want to tell you it's such a treat to have you on because there's always something new that you have to share with us and i think that you're such a great example of a multi-passionate creative who's allowing herself to have those multiple creations and, and not shut any of them down. Let, let them, let them emerge, let them expand and let them continue to develop. And I totally agree with you that, that it's so important for us to be lifelong learners. Can I say one thing before we go? Yes. Um, it's really something very close to my heart and really important to me that anybody that might view this or be watching who, who struggles with anxiety or depression or any type of mental illness or um, say a carer who is very isolated and feel very alone and, and get lost in their own little world that that's who I'm championing. That's who I really want to reach. And it's not only people that have mental illnesses or people that are carers that I care about. It's just that this is something very, very close to my heart because I think that we, as, as a world, we are missing a trick with people that suffer with mental illness because so many are so talented. Yes. And they just don't have that courage to, to go that step further with it. I so hear that's... you. Yeah, I hear you. I think it's so, so important. And of course, 
they're all welcome to come into my universe and your universe so that we can support yeah. them in their creative journey so that they can let yeah. that incredible talent come forward. Yeah. So I know you're going to be on again sometime soon. So you'll be able to give us another update on your upcoming website. And in the meantime, people should probably still follow you on Instagram at, uh, at KC, um, design, right. And then yeah. also at your website, caseydesign.com. Right? Yeah. And then you'll be having announcements in both of those places when you have the new website up and running so yeah. that people can also join you there. Yeah. Lovely. All right. Fantastic. Yeah, thanks, well, sir. listen, thank you so much for joining me. It's a pleasure. You and I will still actually be on when I, when I click the blue finish button, but I want okay. to thank everyone for joining me here today. It's getting dark here in Paris. It's probably also dark over in the UK where, uh, where Shirley is. Yeah, I, it is. <laughs> I always like to say in closing that I am Alma Follett and it's never too late to create. Bye for now and I will see you next week. Bye everyone. <laughs>